Turning now to Maryland, voters there are going to head to the polls to cast their ballot on today's primaries. Despite some calling it the state's most consequential election in years, early voting has been pretty slow, raising questions of whether or not it's a sign of America's primary problem. John Avalon has our reality check. It's time for America to admit that we have a primary problem. I'm talking about those low turnout, sometimes closed partisan primaries that too often end up determining who will head to Congress months before most folks actually vote. Now, the reduction in competitive general elections is by design. It's a prime driver of our polarization and hyperpartisanship, and it breeds a lot of cynicism on the side. The data is downright depressing. But to date this year, there have been House primary elections for 274 seats in 29 states. When Maryland votes today, it will be the 30th primary state in the cycle. Now, according to the Cook Political Report, most of those House seats are rated not competitive, meaning that there's no meaningful election in the fall. The primary is effectively the whole ball game, And many of those safe congressional seats didn't even have a primary challenge. The incumbents sailed a re-election without any voter accountability. But wait, there's more. According to the organization Unite America, which has been tracking this data, just 5.2% of the electorate decided the outcome of 236 of this year's House races to date. That's more than half the House of Representatives. You thought real elections were in November, right? But hey, it could be worse. If you're one of millions of registered independent voters in one of nine states with closed partisan primaries, you've been totally locked out of the selection process altogether. And all this is part of our broken business as usual. In 2020, just 10% of eligible voters effectively decided 83% of House elections in the primaries. That's again, according to United America. So if you want to understand how our politics have gotten so twisted towards the extremes, this is a huge part of the problem. Now, you might have seen the head-smacking stat from folks at 538 that at least 120 Republican nominees for offices like U.S. House, Senate, Governor, AG, and Secretary of State say they still believe Donald Trump's baseless election lies. Pretty depressing. But do the math, right? If all you have to do is win the primary, and you're being judged by a fraction of the most intense partisans, well, that's what would happen. But if you had to actually face voters in a competitive general election, those folks might be a little more reluctant to deny reality. It's also encouraging reckless behavior among people who should know better. According to analysis published at Open Secrets, Democratic groups have spent nearly $44 million in Republican primaries across five states this year, trying to promote the most far-right candidates under the belief that they'll be the easiest to beat. Maybe. But that's a dangerous game to play. If you really care about putting country over party, then you should be doing everything possible to ensure that election deniers don't come anywhere near a governor's mansion or a secretary of state's office. Now, I mentioned earlier that Maryland is the sole state with a primary election today, a welcome competitive contest among Democrats for the governor's chair, with Peter Francho, Tom Perez, and Wes Moore leading the pack. Now, they're competing to take the place of outgoing Republican Governor Larry Hogan, who's one of the most popular governors in the country. Now, that's a reflection of who we really are as a nation, where even in a Democratic-dominated state, they respect a centrist Republican governor. If we want more of this, especially on the congressional level, the solution is redistricting reform, open primaries, and some form of ranked choice voting. And we got the data to prove it. A 2020 study by USC found that open primaries and top two elections lead to less extreme lawmakers. So go out and vote. Make your voice heard. But don't get fooled again about how much is being decided in these lowest turnout elections. And that's what's keeping our politicians playing to the extremes instead of working to find common ground. And that's your reality check. John Avalon, thank you as always.